This portion of the show is brought to you by Namarco's Pizza. Order online at namarcospizza.com. This is the Jeff Orbit Show. All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for listening. Jeff Orbit here. Mark Howitt here with me once again for the beginning of the show, at least working on his board and training and stuff. <laughs> You're getting that certificate. <laughs> Authorized to run the Jeff O Show. We could make it nowadays. You just make up your own, you know, certificates and stuff like that. You That's are right. trying to get. Are you you eventually want to work to your to your private pilot's pilot's license. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really funny thing happened. I a friend of mine was talking about being a pilot. You know, becoming a pilot. And then that night, I had a dream about a pilot, being a pilot. And the next day, a customer calls me. He said, "He's like, come over and give me an estimate." Well, it turns out he's like the head of the pilot instruction up here. Oh, good. In good. Flagstaff. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is a lot of coincidences. Have Within to, 24 hours. Three so. things, you got to do it. Yeah. Three yeah. Things, so. I, um, I got my private pilot's license um, early 2000s. It's something I wanted to do. I actually started flying when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, it was just something I wanted to do. Owen should not listen to this because, you know, Owen is just, he loves planes. He loves learning about flying. Yep. Um, it was his birthday, and he got... Um, uh, Messer Schmidt 186 or something, one of the first fighter jets, some model yeah. from Austria, right? So he just loves that kind of stuff. So I guess it's just in our genes or whatever. I um, started flying when I was like 14 or something, 13, 14. I was doing lessons. I think you got, you can't, you got, it's later to get your license now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what they, you, you've been reading up more than I have, but you they know, changed have, it because there was kids getting it. Like, I'm really past that age. I'm not sure yeah, what yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> but it was like people back in, I remember like back in the 80s, 90s, they were like, um, getting their license before they get their car, you know, I the think, driver's license. I think we do. We, you guys got talking about um, driver's ed in school some shows back. Yeah. Maybe they should have as an option in high school. Flying. Flying ed. Yeah. You know, give you great you rec. I mean, I don't think the profession is what it once used to be as far as the airlines and all that. But there's but we a have, huge demand. There's for a pilots. huge demand for pilots. We got an Emory Riddle. That's, you know, a great Preston, school. Yeah. That's, that, that's training people to fly. I know people have gone through that, but you're right. That there's a market for whether it's commercial airlines, whether it's, you want to go into the, um, you get your private pilot's license and you say, I want to go, I'm going into the air force, for example, yeah. you got a leg up there or you've pri- you fly with all these private jets that are around. You could do, or you could be like a, the Bush pilot, you know, yeah. those crazy guys. Yeah, I actually <laughs> support a group called, uh, it's called Mission Aviation Fellowship. And what they do is they have a bunch of Bush planes all around the world. And yeah. they uh, deliver missionaries to s- certain areas and deliver f- food and medical supplies to people um, in all kinds of countries. Indonesia, Mozambique, all these different places. Yeah, And uh, I think it's a great thing to do. That's, that's pretty cool. So anyway, I, I started taking lessons when I was real young. Um, this was back east, flying a little 152, Cessna 152. That probably cost, you know, twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000 new back then. And now I was looking them up. They're like 50 Can those even for one take off 19- in Flagstaff? Well, is there enough lift to <laughs> there, power? There is a certain time and time of year that it'll take off. And that's when you got to leave, you know, <laughs> very early in the morning, very cold stuck. with no passenger, no fuel, no baggage. And you'll, <laughs> you get down to lower elevation yet. Yeah, that's pretty underpowered for up here. But yeah, I got up to about 20 hours as, as a kid and it was like, nice. I can't remember what it cost back then. And then, um, when I was in my mid to late twenties, I was like, I want to finish this. I got to get back into it. And I, I, my logbook continued on with those hours, did my first solo around 10 hours or so, which is unnerving if you haven't done this <laughs> and I hope you get to that mark because your instructor will be like, you'd be doing touch and goes or something where you're, you kind of land, you, you tap down and then you take back take off, off. Right. Yep. And then at one point they're going to say, okay, just taxi over there and they're going to get out of the plane. Yeah. And they're going to say, okay, continue to do touch and goes. And at that <laughs> moment you really like alone, alone. <laughs> what, are you, what, what? And, um, you're on your own, man. And uh, I did that around 10 hours or so, I think. I don't yeah. know what the standard is on that. And uh, that's it. That, that is quite the feeling to do that and to know that eh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this might be it. <laughs> but it worked out good. Yeah, I think one of the really cool, I mean, flight simulators are fairly expensive, but it would be so cool to have these, in a, like have one in a high school. Yeah, no, I think it would be great. Where everybody could learn if they wanted to, you yeah. know, take the elective. Yeah, you know, we have machine shops. We have all these different things in high school. Why not? Give people the a leg up on getting a job that pays a living. Or even better yet, they maybe coordinate with the local community colleges. Sure. Maybe they are doing this. I don't know. I'm not aware of it. If, if you are, let me know. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. 
and they have a flight simulator there and they have a, um, a, a semester or whatever in high yep. school. And you're like, you're going to go over to, to there, drive over there and take the course. Yep. And there's probably, see, the thing is, is people are so gracious with their time in this country, quite frankly, and volunteering. There's probably some pilot list and they'd be like, oh yeah, I'd love to teach that course. Right. Uh, that, I'd love to volunteer and get more pilots out there. So we have people that are competent to fly our planes. Well, so why does an NAU have a flight simulator and a, a full blown aviation i don't know program i mean we have gender study programs. i was gonna say we they probably these- spent too much money on gender <laughs> studies or something man all these nonsense sustainability that will never get you a good job well yep. sustainability might get you a good job because you get a shoe in the government but go work for the city of flagstaff i right. guess i was wrong on that but uh, there are all these <laughs> these degrees where these students are getting huge loans to get these degrees that don't ever get them a job yeah why don't there's a, such a huge demand for pilots right now huge i mean they're raising even the the age to which it used to be 65 they're going yeah, to 66 67 or something yeah and they, they're going to yeah. keep raising it yeah. because there is a huge shortage of pilots yeah i think that age thing is pretty stupid though because as long as you can pass the physical yeah. which you have to take and as you get older it's more frequently frequent i, don't, I can't remember exactly mm-hmm. what it is but um why not? I mean, yeah, these guys got the experience. If, you the, if you're still, yep. as long as you're not Biden flying around, <laughs> good to go. You know, I mean, I'd rather have an experienced older pl- pilot. If you can get up than, the stairs to the plane. Yeah. You can fly. Yeah, you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> Hoist you up there as long as you know oh how to fly goodness. that thing. Yeah. So anyway, I, I don't know. I might get back into it as well. I hope Angela's not listening, but I wish I'd, I didn't have any means to buy any plane. And now the planes are so much more. So I still don't have the means to <laughs> get your license. Maybe we can uh, still get priced out of the market. Scrounge together and uh, split the time or something. I don't know. A lot of people do that, but then it's expensive. It's, a, it's, it's an expensive thing to get into for sure. So I don't watch a ton of TV, but I just started watching. You, you know, you, you buy something and you get three free months of Apple TV or Netflix. Yeah. Or whatever. So I started watching one of these war movies. I forget what it's called. It's like uh, something. It's about the World War II pilots from the U.S. who go over to oh, Britain. It, it, it's the same guys that produce the um, Band of Brothers. Yes, Spielberg and, and Hanks and, and, and the Pacific. Some other guys. Yep, phenomenal first two series. Is this one owning up to it? Yeah, it's really exciting to see these guys flying and getting <sighs> shot up by the Germans and um, <sighs> crazy. It's like wow, it's, yeah. Those guys flying those bombers in World War II, oh, and those B-17s. guys in, and those guys yep. in the submarines. Yeah, um, uh, I'd, I'd rather be in the plane, but both of those. Um, especially those bombing <laughs> runs early on were, were such it's dangerous and, and such low rate of return. And we'll get, um, Rob comes on the show all the time. He used to be a submarine guy, yeah, yeah. but I agree. I'd rather be in the plane. At least you have a chance of crash landing. You can't crash land a sub. No, you're, it's, I mean, yeah, you, you it's do, done. you do crash, but it's at the bottom yeah, you, of the you, ocean. You can bail out of a plane, <laughs> but then again, I don't know which, yeah. I don't have a chance stuff, to either man. a parachute or a crash landing yeah. and just drowning. My hat's off to, I got to watch that series. Anyway, yeah, maybe, maybe great court um, career opportunity for people is to do schools should have more of that. And then, yeah, where's the truck driving school? Maybe they do have, they I, have started I, that at they CCC. Have started, tremendous need for truck drivers, tremendous yep. need for nurses. Um, I think the, we finally turned the corner on, these ding dong uh, advisors in high school telling everybody you got to go to school and then you got to get your master's, then you got to get your PhD. No, you can just get some good training mm-hmm. over a period of time and then get a, a job that's actually useful to society. Yeah. I or, tell, or go work for the city's sustainability department. <laughs> I tell young people all the, all the time it's like you get out of high school, go in the military, you know, do your time there, you'll have benefits forever. And if you get serious about it, you know, you become a pilot, you know, do the Air Force thing or. Oh, you'll get a job. You get a job. Yeah. And then after you get out of there, go work for the fire department and work there for 20 or 25 years. And now retire when you're 47 and do whatever the heck and you then, want. And then, you, and then usually a lot of these guys, if they're not motivated, they start a small business or right. something. I see it all the Buy time. Buy yourself a plane. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Uh, if you want to do that kind of long-term planning, don't call me. Call Glenn Least at WT Wealth Management saying, I'm going to have this career track, this career track. I'm going to work for a sustainability department. Then I'm going to have a lot of money to invest because they pay really good since they're <laughs> sucking up like 5% of the city's general fund at this point. Call Glenn Least at WT Wealth Management. Have him review your portfolio. Look at your goals. Look at your time horizons. Glenn's really good at that. And he's also good at talking in, in, a, in a way that's not um, 
like he has 15 degrees or he's been on Wall Street for 20 years or something. He can bring it down to my level. Bring it down to my my level, too. Call Glenn Least at 928-225-2474. That's Glenn Least at WT Wealth Management, 928-225-2474. You can email him as well, gleast, G-L-E-E-S-T, at wtwealthmanagement.com. Okay, sorry to bring you through that little tangent on flying and stuff. I just... It's a kind of a passion of Mark and I, and it's, it's pretty cool. Um, uh, you could fly, f- I guess, for NATO, or you could get into one of those jets that cost a bunch. Um, you could, <laughs> you know, dip into the U.S. spending about $860 billion in on defense. defense. I think it's over $900 billion now, the latest numbers. Yeah, as last time I looked, <laughs> we spent three and a half, almost 4% of our GDP on defense. I have those numbers, but yeah, we'll get into that. And uh, three point four nine percent, twenty twenty three. It's about three and a half percent. Yeah, yep. you're cool. Yeah, that's yeah. that that pretty pretty accurate. <laughs> Listen up. And so, as NATO is a thing, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, mm-hmm. you know, started after World War Two because yep. the Soviets came in from the you know the Soviets were working with us as allies, basically fighting the Germans, mm-hmm. but that. Ended the day after Germany <laughs> surrendered. Maybe even the day Maybe, before. Probably, it's, yeah, <laughs> quite a bit before, too, yeah. So we formed NATO, which was originally 12 nations in 1949. Okay. Most of what we could consider Western Europe, not Sweden, not Finland, um, you know, not Greece, not Turkey, not any of these. Um, well, actually, take that back about Greece, but basically Western Europe. Greece has been in there a long time. I have the number here somewhere. Yeah, they were, they were in the 1950 to 1990. So between 1950 and 1990, yeah, Greece, Turkey, um, Germany came in, in after the wall came down, basically all of Germany. Uh, when when uh, you're talking East Germany, when they re- reunified, reunified yeah. correct. Yeah. But anyway, so it started out with 12 nations, and it's grown to 31 members. Correct. Just happened, Hungary finally approved Sweden's entry to NATO. So to become part of NATO, all of the NATO member nations have to approve, and Hungary was the last holdout. And they just finally voted to say, Sweden, you're in. So Sweden is now... I wonder what they got. In. Right? I don't know. Right. You're the last holdout, right? The last holdout is always the place you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Sweden will be number 32. 32. Okay. And so Putin, if you watch the Putin-Tucker Carlson interview... He was complaining about how when the wall came down um, in you know East Germany, the Soviet Union broke up, that NATO wasn't supposed to expand, and that it did. You know, the Baltics came in, you know, all these nations, uh, Poland came in, um, Bosnia, all these, the form- Bosnia's not in, but Bosnia wants to get in, but... The, that, the former Soviet satellite states. Satellite states, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Have all The Warsaw Pact Warsaw countries, Pack countries are now NATO. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. and Putin's having a fit about this. He's like, "You weren't supposed to expand NATO, and here you've pushed it right up to my doorstep in the former Warsaw Pact countries." And you know, Hungary and not Hungary, uh, Ukraine wants to become part of NATO. Georgia is applying. Bosnia is applying. These just more countries on Russia's doorstep, especially Which typically Ukraine, we're Georgia. in the Russian sphere, um, including, you know, those Baltic states that you mentioned, but, yep. um, and then those, well, what, what do you got up there? Latvia and um, Estonia, Estonia, those Lithuania. countries that were very much in the influence of uh, Russia for, oh, for, sure. for a long, long period of time. So Ukraine came, comes in and they're like, we're thinking about it. And they're on the list of applied or expressed interest to join yeah, uh, Ukraine, Georgia, Bosnia. So Russia was upset that in 2014, the Ukrainian constitution basically changed to be anti-pro-West, less pro-Russian. Mm-hmm. So Russia lost their sphere of influence at a place they considered to be part of Russia and part of their traditional lands. Mm-hmm. And then Ukraine starts talking about being part of NATO, and Russia's like, we've either got to act now to get this back, or we, it's lost forever. Or else Ukraine's gone as as well. Right. And also in 2014, and I, I want to be clear here, I'm not pro-Russia, or any, you always you always get these disclaimers from people who just try to cite the history of this stuff. Yep. And um, I think it was a it was very bad for Russia to invade Ukraine um, from a humanitarian standpoint. From just a why why go to war? Um, it's it's one of the worst things that you, that you can do. It's a bad choice. Um, it's it's a it's a bad 
it's a bad choice. So my job's not here to defend them or anybody else. I don't want to send money to Ukraine. No, I largely see this as a European issue. But there is a large history here of issues between Russia and Ukraine that goes back centuries. Um, and you got to remember, back in 2014, we were very much involved of getting rid of the democratically elected leader of Ukraine. Right. Uh, ben, I can't remember how to pronounce his name, uh, but he was re- and, and McCain was very much over there. And Lindsey Graham was probably holding his hand at the same time. They were very much involved with that. The CIA has been very much involved, even in New York Times the other day, yep. um, who has been, a, you know, carrying the Ukraine flag and been very pro. We got to continue to send money and this and that. We're like, yeah. That history is all the reality of the situation. It's never quite black and white or so easy as they, in the mainstream media, try to make it to be. No, Ukraine, Russia wants it to be part of their sphere of influence. The Western allies want it to be part of their of sphere of influence. Of course. And Ukraine is a breadbasket. That's one of the big things they have. They also had the three, I believe it's three major pipelines that go through yeah. there. A lot of resources. A lot of resources yes. uh, that either are from there or coming from Russia to Europe through there. And a lot of stuff, the grain flows from there to Africa. There's a lot going on with Ukraine. Yeah. It's an important spot. Okay, so with Sweden, NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, expands would expand to 33 nations. But 32. Want, I'm, sorry, thir- I'm sorry, 32. But they want to add Ukraine, 33, Bosnia, 34, Georgia, 35. Yeah. Right? So we're talking 35 nations. I remember vaguely something in history about George Washington warning about entangling alliances. Mm -hmm. This is pretty dang entangling. Europe has, I I don't, I'm shocked that the EU is even still around. You know, I'm shocked that these, Europe is a very, very diverse place as far as cultures. (laughs) It's for such a small, relative to the size of the U.S., Countries in it's small countries in in um, like Bosnia, for example, and um, uh, you know the old Yugoslav countries, yeah. right under under communism, they were at war not too long ago. And I know that again a history lesson here. And then, remember nineties, everything right. that was going on over there. <laughs> this is a very very unstable part of the world with Christians and Muslims all mixed together, and mm-hmm. uh, they were forced together. Uh, what after World War One? by people drawing stuff on a map, yep. not a very stable spot. And I, I just have to wonder that if you get up to 35 members of countries this diverse and one goes to war with the other, really? I mean, it's going to drag you in an entangling alliance to, it's like a Poland thing in 1939. Okay. That's the red line. We're now going to war. So Zelensky, yes. Ukrainian president has been in Saudi Arabia again. Wonder why. And the Saudis want to be the nation that works the peace deal. Yeah, I would be. Yeah. And they're very much embedded with the Russians and everybody. The Saudis are very polygamist when it comes to <laughs> international relations. If it was me saying, hey, how do we make a peace treaty with Russia? I would say, hey, look, pull out of Ukraine unilaterally and we will pull our forces, our nukes or whatever out of Turkey. You know, Turkey is going into a, ba- a really bad direction. They basically have a dictator over there. Erdogan. Er- Erdogan. Or Erdogan. However you pronounce it. You- I, will, I will be there soon in Turkey, Hopefully, by the way. Not for more than just your vacation time. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to see, um, well, well, I still call, I call it Constantinople, but I want to see Istanbul mm-hmm. um, for a few days. I, I'll let you know how it goes. See how it goes. It's, <laughs> <laughs> Turkey is still an okay place, but it, it has been going strongly downhill yeah. with this guy. They used to be, as far as weapons, and I'm not sure what their current status is, but we would give them the best of our best equipment Mm -hmm. because they're so close to Russia, basically. And we wanted to have nukes there. We wanted to have our best equipment there as a NATO nation. I'm saying, hey, let's make a deal with Russia. You pull out of Ukraine unilaterally. We pull out of Turkey as far as our stuff. Leave Turkey and NATO, but don't put our military there. Yeah, this this battle's been going on for a long time, Mark. This has been a contentious point since the 1960s, oh, yeah. right? Um, but we we have Greece, which is right there. I mean, it's, yes, it's, it's and a stone's throw these, from Turkey. We have Latvia, Lithuania. Uh, they're surrounded. Estonia, they're surrounded. We yeah. don't need Turkey anymore. And, and, and now Turkey's going downhill. Nowadays, being surrounded is not quite as important. Um, the distance from Greece versus Turkey means little nowadays means with nothing. the way we fight warfare, <laughs> drones and cyber warfare and, 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 and you name it. And uh, let's hope not nuclear warfare. Right. Um, so, yeah. OK, so you got all these countries involved, Mark. And if one goes to war, then we're all we're all there. Um, France, Mac- Macron, the president of France mm-hmm. was 
pounding the table saying that NATO troops should be on the ground in Ukraine just the, just the other day. Um, this is this is a guy who I would have to say, why don't you go there and dig a trench and let's see how it works out for you, Macron, who's probably never done anything in his life. You know what Ukraine government. needs is a Maginot line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the French did a great <laughs> job at that Maginot line, and as long as you didn't drive around it. It works like a charm. <laughs> they'll, they'll never be able to figure out that you could just go through a really rough part of the country and drive around it. And they, they lost within weeks. Um, so crazy stuff there. But um, no, he was pounding the table just the other day saying that we should send NATO troops to um, Ukraine, troops on the ground. And that's the red, that's probably a red line for, for Putin. He's like, no, yeah. So I mean, th- we're involved, NATO's involved, and the U.S. is involved there, <laughs> you know, in a big way, but there's not the open troops on the ground as France was proposing. Yeah, so that France must have dialed that back, because now they're they saying did. definitely not. They did, because Germany said, yeah, not a good don't, idea. Not a good idea, yeah. and Russia immediately came out and said, don't this do will it. lead to international war, basically. Yeah, yeah. It w- and it would. And it would. It would. But that goes to show you the caliber of the leaders we have um, in the world. Now, France, um, by the way, always starts trouble and gets everybody involved. Oh, that's not what you're going to say. Wait, that's not what I'm going to say. But they had a 2014 summit, NATO did, right? So to make sure that countries are properly funding NATO, because who's funding NATO? Who's who's got the largest military in the world? Uh, uh, the United States of America. NATO is the U.S., and we've got some friends that come along sometimes, right? Sometimes. So in 2014, they had a summit and said that the minimum that nations need to be by 2025 is they need to be sp- spending 2% of their GDP on their defense, not putting into NATO, but just generally on their own defense. So that's not just the U S as of right now. Go ahead. Okay. So NATO, they're supposed to be spending 2% all along of their GDP. Okay. Well, I guess they reaffirmed this. And so it's when Trump got into office, he, and even before he got into office, he was saying, we're going to make NATO pay up. And he got in there and said, hey, look, if you don't pay up, we're not going to defend you, basically. Mm -hmm. And everybody gets all uptight about Trump saying that. But it's like, hey, if you're going to be in NATO, you need to keep the terms. Yeah, what are we, suckers around the world? Yeah. We are suckers around the world. We are suckers around the world. So I don't even see France. I got a list of the 10 countries, only 10 countries of the, what did you say, Mark, 32? 32 now. Not 33 with Sweden coming in? 32 32 with Sweden. Sorry, I can't keep track. That's a lot of countries. It's a lot. Right? Only 10 countries have met the 2% threshold. Let me count this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't see France on here. No. I don't see. So, so this guy, Macron, go dig a trench. You go over there. And why don't you send a check as yes. well? Because you, you're cheaping out on this. Uh, Poland, cut off here a little bit, is send, spending like 3.9% on, on defense. Yeah, they're they actually see the a problem. They're bordering Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> there's a little bit of history here with, um, yes. you know, between Germany, Russia. Some, Poland is uh, the highway between the, the, the West and the East there in, in Europe. U.S. is 3.5%. Greece is 3%, Estonia is 2.73, Lithuania 2.54% of GDP they're spending on defense, Finland 2.45, Romania 2.4, Hungary 2.4, Latvia 2.2, UK 2.07. I don't see France there. No, France, you know? Spain, excuse me, Spain. Yeah, no, they, uh, they all rely on the shield of, of NATO, which is largely the U.S., to yeah. protect them. Well, here's the thing. And they're I, not putting in the money. I get so mad because so many Americans have said to me, why can't we have health care like the Europeans have? Why can't we have all these benefits <laughs> like the Europeans have? I said, like, we could yeah. if they would pay for their own defense. We're paying for their defense. And so they have all this extra money to play these social programs. Perfect if you example. took our eight, what did you say, 800 billion, over 800 billion we're spending? Uh, 860. I think it's over 900 now. Though. This is we're a little getting bad. close to a trillion dollars yeah, on defense. We'll, we'll be there. Right? Uh, if you took all that money and put it into dental programs for kids here in the U.S., Medical checkups for kids here in the U.S. Closing the border in the there's Build so the many things you could do yeah. with nine hundred billion dollars every year. That why are we being the world's policemen? Yeah, over and over again, and then adding more countries into the mix that have a history of having problems, right? And a recent history of having problems. And, and you mentioned Turkey. Turkey is a member of NATO, not a member of EU though. They didn't want them in EU, <laughs> no. But a member, and I have that pile of Turkish currency. That's probably that's that's burning, you know, devaluing as we speak at, at sixty percent a year, eighty <laughs> percent a year. It's like these are not. I, I don't know if we have the best allies in this mix. 
Um, and if we're, we're letting in Bosnia because we feel that this is going to be some great uh, advantage in in the troop count or the material or finance or something. <laughs> We're delusional at this See, wasn't point. Wasn't there just a big civil war there not too long ago? Uh, yeah, I that's think. what I remember. But hey, who remembers history anymore? Do you remember right? Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia? Yeah, and yeah. all these things. All, everything's thing gone. Just splintered as soon as the yeah. Soviet Union let go. So did all the, the Soviet states that so many countries formed. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Too much. Too much money. And too many obligations around the world, for sure. All right, Mark, I appreciate it, as always. Thanks, Jeff. Um, you'll be back on uh, Tuesday. 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 And if you got a question or a comment from Mark, I know some have come through. Sometimes people disagree with you. Sometimes they agree. It's all good. Talk it's okay. with Jeff. You're wrong if they disagree, but it's okay. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're wrong, but talk. Well, we, we disagree sometimes. <laughs> talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. That's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Hang tight. More to come. If you're listening to the podcast, please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there. If you're not listening to the podcast, subscribe. Look up the Jeff Orbit Show. Also on video, Rumble, follow us there. And on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate everyone who's done that. You're listening to the Jeff Orbit Show. If you get a rock ship in your windshield, remember to call my good friends at Diamond Auto Glass. Don't call your insurance company. They're going to route you through one of the major big chain companies. And then where are they going to send you? Well, right to that place, of course. Call Diamond Auto Glass directly. You're dealing with a northern Arizona company. You're dealing with someone ingrained and involved in our community. Diamond Auto Glass, where the difference is clear, dot com. Get that rock ship fixed quick before it spreads to the rest of your windshield. 928-779-4140. 928-779-4140 or like I said, go to the difference is clear.com. Welcome back. Uh, we have some comments. I got Olivia here now, and um, they've kind of piled up. So I want to try to go through at least a few of these. A, a lot of these actually came through, I believe, on yesterday's show. Mark Howe and I were um, hitting it pretty hard on a couple of other topics, and I know more are probably coming in now from Mark's comments and our conversation on NATO. Uh, but hey, if you got a comment, love to hear from you. Get those in. Talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. How you doing today, Olivia? I'm good. Yeah. You, you ready for? Um, Ready for a trip? Ready for spring break? It seems like we just had Christmas break. I am That's very ready. Quick. I know it seems like it, this like quarter of school like didn't We're happen, by. but I'm still ready. Zipping by. All right, let's get the comments. Let's go. What do you got? Um, one from Greg. Hey, Luckily, Greg. I don't live in Flagstaff because they've been passing some ludicrous leg- legislation up there lately. But that is exactly why you should not have full-time city council members. People do not need more laws, more regulations, more rules, more fees, and more BS stuff to navigate through day to day. And making these people full-time just put them in a position to endlessly craft legislation. That is not good for the people that live in that area, like Washington does. I can't think of a single thing that's happened in years that's benefited me in any way that's come from government. No, that's a good point. I think, and thank you, Greg, I think of all the stuff that they've passed, and I'm always thinking, yeah, what is this, how is this helping my life, or is it just making my life more difficult? Uh, okay, you're passing this tax or, you know, enacting this tax. How is this helping my life? Or are you just sucking money from me? It's just, yeah, Gre- I, Gre- Olivia, Greg makes a good point. I can't think of anything they're doing. Then I'm like, oh, gee, I'm glad they did that. Yeah, That's helped, that me, so helped much. me so much. No, it's, it's just the opposite. And what Greg's talking about is I, I believe the conversation that Angela and I had on Monday's show, when we came to the realization that our city council – because we live in the city of Flagstaff, and we're sitting in the studio right now in Flagstaff. And, you know, I spend a lot of time in the Verde Valley, too, but Flagstaff's still the place where you guys go to school, and we can't go to our public school anymore because it's become so jacked up. So we pay for our public school, right? And we send you to a private school. We have to pay. pay. Yeah, it's like double the pay. Okay, then we have our government, you know, our, our local city council. But I don't actually, I don't, let me, let me clear this up. I don't want them to do anything for me. I just want them not to do just, anything. No, thank just, you. Stay, just go away. Yeah. But instead, it's just like these governments just seem to be taking and taking and taking. And then Flagstaff, for example, they have that sustainability department that's sucking up 5% of the general fund. 
you know, $10 million a year or something. And then on Monday show, Angela and I hit on uh, a conversation that started with Paul Deasy, the former mayor of Flagstaff. He showed up. Uh, I was out working in the garage and working outside and stuff this weekend. Paul walks up, guy with a clipboard, right? And I'm thinking, hmm, this guy's trying to sell me windows or something. I didn't realize him. He's like, hey, Jeff. And I was like, oh, hey, it's 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 Paul. And I, I've always gotten a good, along good with Paul. Don't always agree with all of his, his policies, but he's always been approachable. And, mm-hmm. you know, we can have a rational discussion. That's fine. We may be on different, uh, you know, sides of the political spectrum, but that's how the world should work, right? But then anyway, he's telling me, we start talking about the salary of the council members. His wife's running, um, Amethyst, uh, running for council. And he says how he was the one vote that voted against the pay increase for the city council, which has taken them from um, when I was there in, I was elected in 2012, served through 2016. The pay was $24,000 a year. Okay. And it's like, I considered it a a part-time job, 20 hours a week, let's say. Uh That's that's your working, 20 hours a week. They've raised that pay from from 24,000 just in 2016 to December 1st of this year, it's going to be $63,800. It's insane. For not even full-time. Yeah, for, it isn't full-time. They say it should be full-time, and I say it shouldn't be full-time. Like, Greg, is that what Greg was saying? Mm-hmm. Train wreck. You know, they're going to be thinking of stuff to do. The, they raised the mayor from 36000 in December 1st of this year. It'll be $70,000 plus other benefits. Well, I think that... Um, we're saying it should be full, shouldn't be full time. It's like if they're making all these terrible things that happen in the like whatever twenty hours a week, just imagine <laughs> what their minds could come up with if they were there all day. It's going to be more better, yeah, at double the time and triple the pay, <laughs> even right? greater. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get so much better service, Greg, and and so much more stuff. Uh, I wish we lived in a world where we had a very limited government and they were, you know, almost invisible and that they were more concerned about the citizens they represented than the other way around. Okay, let's do another comment. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. You're covering too many good topics today, Jeff. A hundred year sample climate of temperatures is not enough to make any conclusions. I watched a show about the Labrie tar pits in which they discussed thousands of years of fossil specimens from dire wolves. They could tell what years there was famine and droughts by the cracks in their molars from having to chew on bones to get narrow, or marrow, as opposed to eating fresh kills. So any person with a brain can conclude that the climate varied widely over those years, which you can't really point your finger at people and animals for. Seems like a natural occurrence, and it's being used as an excuse to tax and restrict business and ban things the left doesn't like, yep. like meat, cars, and freedom, and so on. P.S. I've made some buff, um, the same Buffalo point that was when you and I were talking yeah. on my own social media several years ago. Great minds think alike. Yeah, thank you for that comment. Um, again, I was a, the show from a couple of days ago, and Olivia and I were hitting on the number of cows. I think in America, and we it was like ninety million, and you know they're all right. They're all mm-hmm. trying to ban cows because of cow flatulence, right? Okay, <laughs> right. It's like that's going to cause the earth to. to um, to heat up because of all those excess gases, which is just ridiculous on a surface. I mean, I am not a scientist or, you know, even that smart of a person and I can figure this stuff out. Uh, what is it? 80, what's, what's the atmosphere made of? 80% approximately uh, nitrogen, another maybe um, 20-ish percent or less um, oxygen and then and then everything else you know there's like an extra one percent in there that's everything oh, else. Tiny other little part. <laughs> and it's like, really? I mean, come on. And if, you know, everything they're saying hasn't come true, if it did, they, they would really be rubbing it in our face right now. That, I oh know. Yeah. Oh, you think New it York. would be out there like, look, I have, we were right. I have um, an in- inconvenient truth, and some of you may not even remember this. I mean, I may be talking to people who are younger than I am, um, but they had inconvenient truth, right? And that was the movie that Al Gore did. That said, basically, New York City and Florida is all going to be underwater. And I think we passed that date already. What, what happened? You know, so we we're saying, oh, why do we got to get rid of cows? And I'm glad that you were thinking about this, too, because didn't we have like, um, what was the number? 50 to 60 million buffalo roaming the Great Plains yeah, in, the, in the West exactly. back in you know the 1800s. Well, wouldn't they have warmed the earth? <laughs> They're that doesn't bigger. even make sense. And would all these leftist and viral whack jobs would have would would they have called for us to go out? And what what happened sadly is all the buffalo got slaughtered, most of them, 
you know, it, it shouldn't have happened that way. It shouldn't have hunted them to the, the brink where there's just very mm-hmm. few left, right? Um, but I think they would call for the extinction, extinction of, uh, of the buffalo, these people. They're nuts. And if, the Grand, if they could go back in time and, and, and the Grand Canyon started forming the Grand Canyon, they would stop that erosion. <laughs> <laughs> they'd stop they, everything they, they, they're just they're just they don't listen and then where would we All be right. another comment talk with jeff at icloud.com appreciate that i'm glad you had somebody else thinking of the poor buffalo as well homeless on public and private land oh if okay. you take a drive down the 40 headed west you'll see little encampments of two and three rvs just pulled off into the trees yep. in multiple spots and of course, we know there's no sewage dumps in the middle of the forest, so I have to assume that they're just dumping their tanks on the ground <laughs> and then moving down the road a little way. Oh yeah, well, yeah, there's a sewage dump, all right. Weird how invent- environmentalists never speak up about this kind of thing. Okay, yeah. You, look, there's a, a massive homeless problem in this country, and I don't want to downplay it at all and saying, hey, if I didn't have any money and I was just absolutely down my luck, uh, I might have an RV too, right? And just decide to live in the forest for a couple months to make ends meet. Um, but there are problems with that. And you're only supposed to stay in there 14 or 15 days. Case in point, I think we were cutting wood out in Schnebly Hill Road off of the 40. I like when people say the 40. I never heard of that <laughs> until like Breaking Bad. And they were like, they, they refer to it as the 40. But I guess that's the thing. It's the 40. Anyway, I was um, driving up the, the 17, I guess we should say. <laughs> and um, Schnebly Hill Road off, off 17. And there's a uh, piles of garbage. You tell somebody had a campsite there, probably lived there for weeks, if not longer, and they left all their trash. This is happening all over our forest. So it is it's far an, too often. It's an enforcement issue. Um, well, just but, like we can go cutting firewood this week and they're there, and then the next week and they're there, yeah. and then three months later and they're there. They're still there. Yeah, we notice that a lot. Firewood cutting season is over, at least in, in Coconino National Forest. But um, we notice that a lot. Same people still there, you know, just living there. And that goes back to that public property. And it's like, how long can you stay there? You know, if you live next to that public property and you tried to use it, you probably get kicked off. But if you don't, you know, and you just move in and you're standing on the, you know, the median or something, it's like, oh, then it's okay. You just show up every day and basically you're running a business on that corner. Mm-hmm. I, I don't get it. You know, I want to be sympathetic to people, but it's a steel line from Joe Biden. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. That's, oh, and one more thing, that's an enforcement issue. And I know our, you know, some of our share, I know Sheriff Driscoll and, you know, Deputy Axlin, uh, who's running to be sheriff and, and other folks in law enforcement. I've talked to the people from the Forest Service. They ain't got enough people to, to, to cover the second largest geographic county in, in the country, right? Um, the resources are thin to do that. There's not enough officers, deputies, et cetera, available. But I'd say it's a matter of priorities. Maybe we shouldn't be spending so much money on sustain, stupid sustainability departments that don't sustain nothing but the people that work there. And they just sit there and think of stupid crap day after day. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. One more. Well, we had a quick one from John, commandment correction. Oh, no. It is not thou shall not kill. The correct translation is thou shall do no murder. Did you know that? Did I goof that? It's a translation issue? I knew that, but this was a refresher. Okay, Because yeah. if I was referencing it, I would probably also say... Like yeah, that, yeah. You know? No, I appreciate that. And I wonder how, yeah, how different things are in translation too. Because I said, uh, we were talking about this yesterday with Mark about um, the legislature has passed in the Senate, I believe, a bill that would allow the Ten Commandments in like schools and stuff. If the teacher wants it, if the, you know. To be taught? Uh, to be even or displayed. To be, to be put oh. on a list of things that can be displayed. Like uh-huh. the Constitution and the Ten Commandments, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I was like, I have no problem with that. That's fine. That should be allowed. That's, that's fine. If you got a problem with that, I don't, don't read it, right? But mm-hmm. my whole point was, I think I said, um, yeah, people would have a real problem with thou shall not kill. I mean, that's, what we, we, that's something we should all disagree on, right? Mm-hmm. No. I mean, that's, this should be a no-brainer. But thou shall not murder. Because I also said thou shall not cover thy neighbor's wife was another one. But th- I could have that translation wrong, too. I did this what? stuff at the top of my head, man. I mean, there's also different translations. I know, I mean, most of our, we at school, like, mostly have the same translation of Bible, but when somebody has the different one and everyone in the class is looking at it or whatever and they're reading it out and everyone's like, hmm. Mine doesn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I've had <laughs> that happen. Quite. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I appreciate all those comments. Uh, I really do. Keep those coming. That was fun. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Let's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Hey, if I was selling a home in the Flagstaff area right now, 
or if I was buying a home in the Flagstaff area right now, I'd call Kelly Broadus with the Broadus Properties Group brokered by EXP. Uh, she has helped so many people sell their homes for top dollar because she has a team around her and the knowledge, the experience, and the passion to sell your home. She puts a lot of effort into it, puts money back into it for the advertising, the photos, the drones up above, taking all the videos and all this stuff. Call Kelly Broadus right now if you're thinking about listing your home or if you're thinking about buying a home. 888-446-5602. 888-446-5602. Or go to northernarizonafinehomes.com. That's where you can get the valuation, instant valuation on your home. It's super easy. Again, go to northernarizonafinehomes.com. Back in a minute. listening to the podcast please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there if you're not listening to the podcast subscribe look up the jeff orbit show also on video rumble follow us there and on youtube subscribe we appreciate everyone who's done that This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. If you've got a broken smartphone, you can get that fixed. Just stop by Just Wireless in West Flagstaff right on Milton Avenue. Now, Just Wireless can fix the cracked screens, the charging port issues, just about anything out there, including whether no matter the brand you've got of smartphones, uh, new battery, because that's one of the biggest problems that we see out there is those batteries dying and then your phone's not working right. Just Wireless will take care of it for you. Stop on by, plus check out their great line. You want to save some money? Check out their great line of refurbished phones at Just Wireless in West Flagstaff or visit JustWirelessAZ.com. Okay, that's it for this hour. Um, Olivia, you pile up those comments more. We yes, have, I a good will. Time. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. And if you happen to be listening back to the podcast, I, I really do appreciate everyone who's doing that. I also would appreciate any comments that you could leave right within the podcast that helps with kind of boosting it up for us. Share that with your friends as well. Um, and you can, if you're not on the podcast, look up Orvitz, O-R-A-V-I-T-S. More to come. Don't go anywhere. Back in just a few. The information provided on the Jeff Orvitz Show does not constitute legal, medical, financial, or tax advice. All information is the opinions of the host and guests. You should always seek the advice of a professional regarding any of these complex issues to make sure all circumstances of your situation are properly considered. Hey, if you're listening to the podcast, please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there. If you're not listening to the podcast, subscribe. Look up the Jeff Orvitz Show. Also on video, Rumble, follow us there. And on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate everyone who's done that. This is the Jeff Orvitz Show. If you're looking for a home for lease, I have a two-bedroom, one-bath home available right now. It's in a duplex, uh, really nice, and it's one of those that were built a while ago, but it's been remodeled, so that means you got more space. You know, the new ones nowadays, you get, it's like living in a closet. Two-bedroom, one-bath for fifteen ninety nine per month. Uh, check it out at flagstaffforlease.com or send an email, rent at flagstaffforlease.com, rent at flagstaffforlease.com. Again, a two-bedroom, one-bath uh, home in a duplex available right now for fifteen ninety nine. Flagstaff4lease.com is an equal housing opportunity. This portion of the show is brought to you by Just Wireless. You can get your smartphone fixed there. Plus, check out their great line of refurbished phones at JustWirelessAZ.com. This is the Jeff Orvid Show. Welcome back. Hour two of the show. This time, uh, well, I still got Olivia with me, uh, but Angela joins us as well to go over, once again, some more legislative bills um, making their way through the process, plus this lawsuit against Arizona landlords and a, a site called RealPage that the Arizona Attorney General is saying 
and accusing that they allegedly conspired to illegally raise rents in Arizona, uh, mostly in the Phoenix area and the Tucson area. And they're, they're saying that uh, like Phoenix went up like 36% and that they used the data from this organization to all collude together to come up with their new rent prices and this and that. I want to go over some of the details. Pretty new lawsuit here, so I don't have all the, the facts and, and details yet, but I, I find this one interesting. So we'll get to that. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. A couple more email comments as well. Uh, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. And then uh, I, I forgot to mention this. Mitch McConnell says he's a no-go. So yeah, he's, yeah. he's After not like two decades or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. How long is he? Did we look up how long he's been there? Well, I meant as majority as, or minority is it, leader. Has it been that I long that so. he's been doing this thing? I mean, mm-hmm. that, that, the guy's got to be, his, yeah, guy's got to be in his eighties. So Sen- Senator uh, Mitch McConnell, Republican um, m- minority leader of the Senate, uh, who, as you said, was, was majority leader in the past as well. Um, says that November he will be stepping aside finally to let other someone else take leader. Is that is this an indication that he thinks Trump's going to win? You know, he's, he's like, oh, maybe, or is he just getting? I mean, this is a guy that's mumbling maybe could, because and bumbling. he's eighty two. Is he eighty two? And okay. he's uh, okay. been the longest serving <clears throat> Senate party leader ever. <clears throat> it's like he's wow. going to wake up from a dream and realize his entire life went by. <laughs> <laughs> and he spent he's it the whole time. He's been in a coma for 50 years or something. <laughs> I did that for that long. When did he first so get in? So he's still in the Senate till 2027. He's just stepping oh, down from... Okay, he's just stepping down. So from keep the that. leadership. Okay, well, good. Thank you. Could you step down quicker? Yeah, Can we speed this up? He's going to be 85 Probably. by that time. Yeah, 85. Probably rerun for... He just well, doesn't want to do that. Well, he's been the, freezing up and stuff. I mean, oh, it's he, should, horrible. he shouldn't even be in there. Yeah, it's 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 been really bad. When, when did he first get into politics, does it say in there? Because a lot of times he was probably in, the, my guess, the legislature, and then he was in the House, and then, and then he was in the Senate. So either, the dude's probably been around, I'm going to bet, since 1972. He probably, <laughs> no, I'm serious. He probably got in there around the same time as Biden. You know, they probably used to pal around together. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they've been. Let me know if you find that, because I, mean, I, I bet you, I, my guess is, Olivia, 1970s. I can look it up. Too. Yeah, uh, look it up. Yeah, two. Uh, let's see. Yeah, He's been senator back. since 1985. Yeah, but he was he was in Congress before, like in the House before that. I bet that would be that would be my guess. But you keep looking it up, and while you're doing that, I want to rem- remind you that uh, you you might be able to save a lot of money. Angela and I did by having. All state insurance agency rebid our policies, our, our homeowners, our auto, even rental policies. Eric Boatner, all state agency. If you think that, oh, I just got to take this continual every year price increase when it comes to my insurance, we, we were doing that, right? And uh, we were like, enough is enough. We went to Eric and Lisa Boatner, they rebid our policies, they did a great job, they got a similar coverage, and we are paying less. Check it out. Give them a call. Eric Boatner, Allstate Agency, 928-774-8722. 928-774-8722. Yeah, I don't think he was um, in the House before the Senate. Okay. He was Assistant Attorney General under Gerald Ford in the <laughs> mid-70s. Okay. Just a, same point. Yeah. Same so point, he, right? He was there. And then he went to serve like in the home state of Kentucky for a while as a judge. And then he went to the Senate in 1984. Okay, so early 70s, so um, 30, 40, 50, 50, yeah, 50 years in government. He was assistant attorney general. 50, 50, am I right? 50 years? Mm-hmm. 50 years in government, so he's 82, so he's been in government since he was, you know. 34. In his, in his mid-30s. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I know. Are you serious? You know, give me a break. And he still has three years to go. Yeah, and he's still got three years to go. <laughs> so ridiculous. Term limits. Term limits. Okay, so Attorney General Chris Mays is of Arizona is suing landlords. I pulled information from multiple sources, multiple other news agencies, because I have not, I'm going to be clear, I haven't had time to look at the actual lawsuit myself. So mm-hmm. don't ding me if we get something weird here. But the consensus is that the lawsuit is... It's alleging that the there's a Texas-based software company called Real Page Inc., which it, it works with landlords. So I guess you subscribe to it or something, and it collects data on the rental market, right? And multifamily landlords, they're saying, they're alleging that multifamily landlords, especially in Phoenix and Tucson, conspired to drive up the costs of the rental properties. They go on to cite that Phoenix metro area saw a 30% increase 
um, is it since 2021 or in 2021? Uh, I'm a little unclear on, on to the total increase in rent rates. Um, if we look at Flagstaff, I mean, things have definitely gone up by 30% right. uh, or, yeah. or more. This article says in the last two years, they've risen by at least 30%. Okay, two years um, raised at least 30%. So they're alleging that they got together and basically provided the data to show, oh, uh, to, I, I'm gonna. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm sticking my own assumptions in here, because collusion is a big thing in the real estate world. If you go get your real estate license, it's talked about all the time. Um, especially colluding to um, on housing prices when you sell them, mm-hmm. but also colluding with other. You know, if groups of landlords get together and say we won't rent anything, you know, below two thousand dollars a month for this two bedroom house in this part of town or in this city or, or whatever, right? Um, so collusion is definitely a, a, a real thing that they attempt to go after. But is this collusion by simply providing and collecting data and saying, here's what the market's doing? This is happening all over the place right now. Right. Well, Hotels. And, I mean, we we can speak for ourselves and we know that our costs have gone up yes. a lot. So it, yes. And actually, we haven't done the probably raises that we not 30 percent. Yeah. Right. But I can attest to the fact that. All costs are going up. Yes, dramatically. I mean, property taxes, utilities, insurance, like insurance, I just mentioned. interest rates. Yep. I mean, the price of the plumber, the price of the just you know, drywall, labor electrician, yeah. the yeah. snowplow guy, and a it's big one, all a lot. And a big one is that's going up is the very price of real estate itself. Right, and if so, if you're just getting into something, yeah. then you're paying more already just to buy a complex or whatever yeah all of a sudden let's just say on a building cost maybe you've gone from two hundred dollars to three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars a square foot to build a place well and then you get into that you look at it and you say well i gotta rent this two-bedroom place what am i to do because most landlords have a mortgage they definitely have insurance they definitely have uh, taxes fixed costs Mm -hmm. um, emergency costs the, the heater goes out this and that what are they to do other than to say well the rent this two bedroom, yeah, used to rent for, well, let me, let me just go back here. Cause I know this market. This is what we do. We got involved in the rental real estate market in Flagstaff in what? 2002. Early 2000, 2002. So we've been in it for, wow. We've been in it for a while. <laughs> and, um, we had little two bedroom, one bath apartments when we bought these places that were renting for about five twenty five a month. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's 22 years ago, 525 a month in Flagstaff. Imagine that. Yeah. Right. right. Now that was low because the people we bought it from had a lower basis in, in the project. Mm -hmm. They probably bought it 20 years before. And they're like, I can't believe I'm getting 525 for this. Right. And we're like, Oh, this is, this stinks. So we, we, I think we raised them up to about, we went and did some remodel, you know, new tile floors, painting, things like that. And we're like, well, the market's like, I, I look on at that time. It was like newspaper advertising. Right. That was basically the main thing. And oh, I see the seven, eight hundred dollars for two bedrooms. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, that's what I'm going to put this at, because I see what the, the market is bearing. It's a mm-hmm. market force. Yeah. Had I put it at nine hundred or a thousand at the time, I wouldn't uh, have rented it. Wouldn't have rented. I wouldn't have rented because there was other competition. So I, what I'm saying is I had to we had to boost it up because we had a higher input cost into it. We had to or we were going to be negative. We'd have negative cash flow every every month. I think a lot of that's what's happened the past couple of years. Now that same one that was 525 is now probably in the 1500 range, 1600, which I think is probably low. That's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. Don't AG Chris Mays, I'm not telling everybody what to set their price at. So don't have a, you know, a cow and come, come sue us too. Yeah. Um, right. But that's just, I look at the market and I look at all the listings out there and I try to make a, a guess. Uh, hey, this is what all my competition's doing. So I'm going to, yeah, maybe, at least in this and, area. Yeah. And maybe sometimes I'm going to push it a little higher and say, I, you know, oh, maybe I can get a hundred more. And then all of a sudden you don't rent it and you're like, okay, I got to back down a little yeah, bit. Yeah. It's fine. It's called price discovery. We're mm-hmm. trying to find the pricing. Is this really that different or did they collude as the attorney generals mention and say, nope, we're going to, the price is now 1599 for a two bedroom. Nobody go below that. Well, Did the they do article that? I was reading says they're using algorithms and stuff to kind of, I don't know, like see what other ones are charging yeah. and it would have some kind of algorithm of like, oh, well, this is what it should be. 
So, I mean, I don't know what that. I don't much... know. I don't know either. I guess they're going to they're gonna stick in front of a jury. I hope the jury is competent enough yeah, that's the to problem. understand that's housing. It's really technical. Really technical. So. Yeah. Is it just very, is it what I, what we've been doing as far as looking at all the ads out there, trying to make a best guess, trying to feel out the market, find that price discovery, or was it something nefarious where they were saying, like I said, landlords, do not list this for under fifteen ninety nine. Then right. that would if be some serious clue. We We're all, all going to stick this. together. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. maybe have some. Yeah. I well, don't know. But other industries do that. The hotels do it. The gas stations do it. They kind of they use those algorithms. So we have X amount of yep. vacancies, and the less you know, the more hotel rooms fill up, the more pricey the remaining ones become. Yep. So if you're the last one, you know, you're getting the last room at that hotel, you're probably paying more yeah. than anyone else. Oh, you know, Olivia got 200 because she booked five days ago and then Angela comes along and there's two rooms left. And now it's now it's 400. Yeah. And then I come along and I'm the last guy, last room in the whole city. All of a sudden it's eight hundred dollars for that room. Yeah, Is that they do cool? that. That's data gathering. That's um, algorithms. Yeah. We just went up, uh, took the what was it fifth and sixth grade uh-huh. up skiing. Snowball does a great job, by the way, of all the oh, public they do schools, it too? <laughs> all the public schools yeah. you know they have them come up there but snowball if you they have a, a progressive system that it, yeah on the weekends all of a sudden yeah, the ticket you try is, and go there on a saturday yeah, and they you bump, get your bump, ticket bump. that morning, yeah. that morning. Wants to get. Yeah, you yeah. go on a tuesday afternoon sometimes or friday or something it's, it's 20 dollars. you go on a busy day because there's more demand is, is this just supply and demand or is this just politicians once again looking to try to find a way to hit the hot button topic today, which is housing costs, and they are going to fix the housing crisis. Let me throw this out there. And I don't know all the details on this yet. Like well, I said, the, I was going to say real quick, the article that I read did not have the other side. Oh, of course all. not. Of course, there was not. nothing yeah. from the defendants in the case. Uh, exactly. And I'm, I'm not a defendant in this case or anything, but I'm yeah. trying to understand from their point of view, because we're a much smaller um, business than probably some of these big multifamily apartment complex conglomerates that come in and buy up a whole bunch of them. But is it just data gathering and trying to pinpoint the, find the price discovery for them of what's going on out there? Or like I said, if you show me the documentation that said that, no, Angela, you must rent that for 1599. That's our, that's our base price. Okay. Yeah. Right. Then, then you got something. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see if they can, they can, they can discover that. I I doubt it, but they're claiming, okay, let's go with that 30% increase. Olivia, you and I were just talking the other day about, the, the grand doubling that's been going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were talking about, I, I still have this article here. Uh, it was a, it came from Zillow. It was the most expensive. Well, not the just. Were the, uh, with the, the most, the most. Increase Yeah, yeah. Let me in make certain sure. Areas, who, who, in yeah, so it put together by Zillow, right? So it was the top 50 market increases in real estate in the state, right? So, Let's just look at uh, the number 50 here. Oro Valley. Five year price, the, the one year price change was 2%. The five year price change was 55%. So they're saying, oh, in two years, rents went up 30%. Well, which two years? The last two years when landlords finally realized that the five-year price change on the real estate that they bought was, you know, they had to spend, in this case, $178,000 more for a single family home. So is it is it absurd to think that you'd have a 30% rental price increase when you've had a 55.4% um, uh, increase in the cost of the underlying real estate to, to get that and to buy that? Right, right. You see what I'm saying? I mean, is yeah. that it? so when you put that in front of a jury and say, well, wait a second, yeah, but housing prices went up 50%, 55 Well, we, and how much did every other cost associated with having exactly. a rental how much did that increase yeah yeah the labor costs uh, mormon lake went up 85 percent so it's like okay if rents went up 30 percent there it's probably, not, it's probably not a ton of rentals there but you get what i'm saying right we know the stuff's been going up so did the did this company help them fine-tune the data to try to find the right price discovery or was there something else there but i'm looking at the price increases of everything underlying uh the asset with the, the, the capital investment into the house like you said, the insurance, the tax. Uh, I don't hear the government. I don't hear AG Mays going after the, the government for all the property tax increases. Yeah, all the counties and yeah, cities yeah. and all that. Yeah. If the properties, uh, here's another one. New River went up 67.8% in, in five years, you know, for a, a typical home, right? Uh, are we going after the, the counties and the, and the cities and the communities that also increased and made more money off the new assessed values? Right. I think yeah. not. 
or right? the new building codes that cost more for yeah, to build so if exactly. you were building something from scratch and how much more it is when you factor in the new codes for everything it just makes so much more yeah. expensive yeah and then i'll dig i'll dig deeper here are we going after the federal government and all the money printing they had all the t- trillions of dollars they pushed in. And oh, magically during COVID, when you pump in $9 trillion, real estate market values go up between, you know, 30 to 50 to 60 to 80%. Yeah. Huh. And other goods and services huh. too. How'd that happen? Are we going after them? Yeah. How about the federal reserve that artificially sets interest rates to two point something percent on a ridiculous two point something percent on 30 year fixed mortgage that pushed more people into the market that pushed the prices up even higher. These people live with blinders on. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's just, oh, let's just sue. It's got to be the landlords. Well, it right? always is. Yeah, they're the easy scapegoat yeah, in the easy whole situation. Scapegoat. Or, oh, let's, hey, let me get some time on the Super Bowl. I'm Joe Biden, and, I, you know, I like ice cream. And, you know, and uh, snacks. <laughs> and and it's called, um, it's called shrinkflation. <laughs> and these companies, they just, oh. They just, you know, so they're just deciding they to, evil. yeah, they're evil companies are just raising the prices just because Doritos. <laughs> I mean, it's, what is yeah. this? These politicians nauseate me at this point. I, I got to tell you. Um, and like I said, if there's something there, I want to see it. Okay. And fine. If you're going to yeah. find that out, but I better see something concrete that they colluded and said, yeah, we're going to, this is it. Or just yeah. up, up, up. What? Is the attorney general, look, look, remember 2008, 9, 10, when we were in the real estate market and everything collapsed? You remember that? You remember that? That was fun times, right? Yes. And ever since then, we've been building reserves because we've been like, I don't want to go through that again. We're right in the heart of that, right? And all of a sudden, rental rates started going down, 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 down. I didn't see any of these politicians. I didn't see any of these bureaucrats out there saying the landlords are getting hit yeah the prices are going down and 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 but their costs are fixed so that 800 or 900 dollar rental is now 750 on average you know because they had to get people in there but with the property taxes went way up you know because it's an 18 month lag time they're really getting hit they've got fixed costs and they're really important to the uh, economy because people need to live somewhere right Oh, wait, is the government going to provide housing? I think they've tried to do that, right? Remember those big block mm-hmm. towers they made that looked like the communists built them in the inner cities that turned into uh, dilapidated drug drug dens within three the years? Rent control and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't hear them saying anything. I didn't hear them saying anything when, when landlords had to provide free housing during COVID. The uh, COVID hysterics that the government forced on everybody remember that Mm -hmm. Uh, we had two people that decided they didn't have to pay rent i went to court i went to court and the judge was like yeah you're right they should pay you but you can't kick them out and i was like well that was a waste of time yeah could you have told me that before like just say hey even if you win you lose right remember that Mm -hmm. yes (sighs) i gotta take a break (laughs) talk with jeff at icloud.com that's talk with jeff at icloud.com that's why I like to own a little bit of physical gold, and I buy my physical gold and silver from Desert Gold Exchange because the government can't print physical gold and silver, right? I guess they, they can mint it, right? But they can't, they can't create gold and right, conjure yeah. it up out of nothing. Uh, call Desert Gold Exchange. Look into silver. Um, I, I, I really um, have enjoyed and um, used silver as an insurance policy for, for decades. I'm not telling you what it's going to do. I just like to have it because I don't trust uh, the money printers out there. Call Desert Gold Exchange. Talk to them about silver. Talk to them about gold. Uh, They offer the lowest prices guaranteed, so lowest fees and commissions out there. They make sure they keep that low. They pass that savings on to you. Justin and his team will do a great job for you. Give them a call right now, 888-852-4343. That's 888-852-4343. Let's just do a comment because I'm so so mad about it. You know, this thing that and how they, you know, just they try to pin it. Uh, there's this thing going on now where the government is just basically uh, if, if you're an enterprising person and if they did something wrong, fine. Nobody's perfect, right. right. right? And yeah. people do do stupid things and even illegal things at times. But I, I'm tired of the government uh, always trying to find the scapegoats so they can get votes. Right. OK, so yeah. about fish. Uh, yeah. From Curtis says um, the dam to Lee's Ferry. The dam to Lee's Ferry. You're talking about the 
the trout, I think there was. The trout? Um, yeah. And you could get... A, I couldn't remember, and I said like Pariah Canyon or something like that, right? Yeah, so the area where you can catch the trout, yeah. and then they're having a competition for like the biggest one. Yeah, and all we that. were on... That sur- is from okay, Grand Curtis. Canyon Dam yeah, thank you. to Lee's Ferry, okay. which I was thinking, and when I heard you talking about that, I was like thinking the same thing, like, it's Lee's Ferry, it's Lee's yeah, Ferry. Yeah, 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 well, Curtis but, clarified that. We were talking yeah. about the, the there's there's like prizes to catch the brown trout, right? And we were a little unclear as to what you actually get and where that area is, because I guess the brown trout, they consider invasive in that part. And there's a lot of Colorado them. and there's a bunch of them. And I couldn't remember where it was. It's like, what is the prizes? And this is like game and fish that's offering this. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it's that or the Forest Service. Where did it go? OK. And they're offering if you they want to get them cleared out of there. Brown trout spring bonanza. And that <laughs> starts March 1st. Yeah, so through they, April 7th. They're saying that there's a reward for at least $25 per brown trout over six inches in length. So that's the information. So we if you didn't catch have one and then you turn it in to somewhere, you'd have to, I guess, look you up. You don't turn it in or you like how take do you a prove picture. That how do you prove yeah. that it was? Yeah, you, because, I mean, when you're fishing, you're like, it's this big. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like. <laughs> they get bigger and bigger. Yeah, that thing was. Hey, rewards will increase from $33 per brown trout to $50 per brown trout and $15 for brown trout caught with a pit tag. Huh. I guess if and you know about this, you know this about again? this. again? Uh, probably Arizona Game and Fish, right? I mean, it's or is, or is it the Forest Service? The bottom line here is we were wrong on the location, and we wanted to correct that. It's from Glen Canyon um, uh, to Lee's Ferry. Lee's Ferry. And if you are a fisherman or woman, this is your thing, and you'll find out about it. Go go right. check this out. Lee's if you're Ferry into is, catching, is really popular. That's where, yeah. where they put in a lot of the rafts that go on the canyon yeah. expeditions, if, yeah. and there's a lot of fishermen that, that's the spot. Go there, you camp there. And apparently yeah, there's some financial incentives place. here to get them. Yeah. And there's a grand prize. At the end of the brown trout spring bonanza, the angler with the largest fish har- fish harvested as determined by head length, you're going to have to document this somehow. I don't yeah. know how they're going to, will receive 500 bucks. Mm. That's pretty cool. Okay. So and brown trout, if it's like any other trout, we, we've caught plenty it's of trout. Good to eat, right? Should be pretty good eating. Yeah. Not like that humpback chub thing or whatever that thing is <laughs> that does not look like it's good to eat and you probably can't eat it because it's probably is that the endangered one that they're trying yeah. to uh to protect there all right love to hear from you talk with jeff at icloud.com uh hey talking to the um right person when it comes to refinancing a home and when it comes to the interest rates on credit cards is a really important thing and a big thing right now unfortunately a lot of people have gotten kind of swept up in the using the credit cards for everyday necessities like food and gas. But once it's gone, it's gone. You know, you get it. It's mm-hmm. a consumable yeah. thing. It's, it's done. Um, if you own your home, you've been in there a few years, you, you probably have, I don't know, we were just going over these numbers. You may have equity from 30 to 50 to 60 to 70%. I don't know. Ask Chris May. She's now a real estate expert too. <laughs> just like the guy in New York, right? The, the judge that sued Trump. Yeah. He's a real estate expert too. He knows all about loans. You know, he's gotten one loan his whole life, probably. And the values apparently too. And he's an expert now. Anyway, uh, you do want to call an expert and that's Kim Dawson with Nova Home Loans. She'll help you out when it comes to refinancing. And Nova Home Loans is Arizona's largest privately owned mortgage lender. So they, they got a lot of options for you. Bank and you get certain programs there or a broker that they can look for the best programs out there. Call Kim Dawson right now. Uh, you need a refinance. You need first time home buyer, uh, second home, off-grid properties. Mention to Jeff Orvitz show, get $250 off the lender's fee at closing. Call Kim at 928-310-6458. That's 928-310-6458. Or go to novahomeloans.com slash Kim Dawson. Kim Dawson, MLS 697411. Nova Home Loans, MLS 3087BK number 090242. Equal housing opportunity subject to credit approval. Terms and conditions may apply. If you're listening to the podcast, please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there. If you're not listening to the podcast, subscribe. Look up The Jeff Orbit Show. Also on video, Rumble, follow us there. And on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate everyone who's done that. You're listening to The Jeff Orbit Show. This portion of the show is brought to you by the Rodeo Steakhouse in Williams. Hey, 
I just mentioned the, the Rodeo Steakhouse in Williams. Uh, great steak, um, great um, ribs as well. And they have is an event going on out there coming up. Um, is it this? Is it what, what day? March first. What is that? Friday. So that's let's, let's the twenty. Yeah, that's that's on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. March first. So coming up Friday, and we'll um, we'll let you know about any of these because this is more politically related um, as they come up. So if and in this case, the Senate race, you've got two Republicans really in this thing. Carrie Lake's um, the name you often hear about. Mark Lamb, who's a sheriff in Pinal County is going to be there um and he's the other kind of big name in the senate republican race for the for the gop primary so he's out there what what's the times for sheriff lamb says he's gonna get there at 5 p.m and is gonna be speaking at six okay so if you want to hear one of the candidates for u.s senate um this friday at the rodeo steakhouse in williams uh you can get there like 5 p.m. Um, Sheriff Mark Lamb will be there, uh, and then uh, he's speaking at, at 6 p.m. And then get a steak. Yeah. Right? Get or a reservation. Whatever you like. Yeah. You might want It might be a busy night, and it yeah. might be a fun time to head on. Plus, Friday night, yeah. Head on yeah. out to Williams and, and have, have a good time, right? Stay, stay the night. Then get up, have breakfast, wander around. Uh, one more before we run out of time, and I want to announce this at least uh, for the next few days. Olivia has an event on... This Saturday. Okay, tell us about that real quick. The Uh, floor is yours. (laughs) Well, me and some friends, we're doing a fundraiser for a school trip we're going on, so we are selling Navajo tacos. It's on 4th Street in Flagstaff. You'll see the signs that we've made around. You'll see Olivia, too. You want to stop by? I know. You can come and say hi to me and... Then buy a taco. (laughs) Yeah, these are authentic (laughs) Navajo tacos. You've got... You guys are... This is all scratch and... From yeah, scratch. they're like talking about, oh, we got to get the lard and the, you oh. know, the dough made and, hey, you, you know, know the beans. all the stuff to fry it up. Sorting beans is getting serious. So, yeah. Okay. So that is Saturday. Uh, and this is a, a trip that Flagstaff Christian School puts on. And then she's, you know, they get to go to places and see things that a lot of kids just aren't doing. So, but they're, you know, it costs money to do it. So, yeah. Plus, you just come out, get some great food, meet Olivia. I think Angela will be out there, too. Yeah, I'll be, there, be there, too. There. And it start, starts at 10 o'clock on Saturday. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have plans. to go. I, me, Owen and I are planting more stuff in Camp Verde and getting more, more, more area ready I don't for know. Planting. That can make someone not want to come. Maybe he'll um, Maybe surprise I'll be there. stop I by. might come back. I might be like, I really want to get back up and have Navajo Tacos Saturday starting at 10 a.m. Uh, for the next couple hours on 4th Street. Look on the left as you're driving north, 4th Street and Olivia and somebody will be out there with signs. So anyway, okay, good stuff. Uh, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Let's do a couple more bills before we run out of time. A couple more things going on uh, down at the Arizona legislature. Uh, remember, though, if you need new blind shutters or shades, call my good friends at the Blind Brothers and make sure they'll take really good care of you just like they did Angela and I. New blinds, new shutters, new shades. Uh, great options, um, and, and they've got something for everybody's style, everybody's budget. Call them up, 928-634-2423. That's the Blind Brothers at 928-634-2423. Go to theblindbrothers.com. Uh, okay, a couple bills. Label AI in campaigns. This one is making its way through the Arizona legislature. It's sponsored by Senator Frank Carroll, Republican from Sun City West, SB 1359. Um, It is a bill that basically says if you're running a political campaign and you can't, you're going to use, if you're going to use AI, in some form or fashion to put out the info to do the research to even the, there was this, there was this um, like call that apparently Biden made, but it wasn't Biden. It was an AI, you know, duplicate mm-hmm. or whatever, which probably is not just like, I'm moving by and move. I mean, I, anybody can do that <laughs> anyway. Um, he wants to get it so that it has to be labeled that hey, this that is generated is, right. and, and, you know, using AI or et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I, I, look, I wanted to, I, I think we need to get serious about probably getting legislation for AI when it comes to fakes. And did you create a, a likeness of me, for example, that it's, Hey, yeah, that's, that's just voice. That's what's he saying though. Oh, well, yeah, he's, oh, been, no, he's it, gone to the dark side. Yeah, it's right, getting right? used to smear people and, yeah. you know, do kind of, Horrible, nasty things to, really, to some people. Things, yeah, and it's going to get worse. Yeah, because and just sometimes you it, your reputation can be tarnished, and you can never come back from that. In some cases, 
Yeah. And even if you have a law that says you can't, and there isn't right now that I'm aware of, you can't do it, and then somebody does it, but it's determined to be a fake, you know, you can figure that out. Maybe it'll get harder to do that, but usually you can analyze it and figure it out. Um, the damage is done. Mm-hmm. So too late. you should be able to go after people for damages for that. And a totally different subject here, but the, we're talking a political one, but we're going to need to do something on AI so people can't destroy you and then say, oh, yeah, I was just kidding. And then it goes away. But by then it's like, what, on page eight or something? Yeah. Or buried right. somewhere yeah. on the Internet yeah. that, oh, no, that was actually a fake. Right. So probably got to do something like um, animal cruelty. Um Got one there, Olivia. Well, there's a bill. It aims to create animal abuse registry in Arizona to protect animals from further abuse. Okay. So they just found like a particularly bad case of a bunch, dozens of dogs that were in terrible conditions in a woman's house. And so that shed light on the problem. So state lawmakers introduced a number of bills to try and prevent these kinds of cases, including a bill that could force convicted animal abusers to register online. Hmm. Anyone convicted of animal cruelty, fighting, or bestiality hmm. would need to um, register with law enforcement within a week of conviction. Their name, photo, and address would be added to a public registry in hopes of preventing any repeat offenders. Interesting. I wonder where that's just working through the process at this point, I, I would imagine. Um, yeah, so we would have like, so you have an animal abuser um, database kind of thing and notification mm-hmm. you have the sex abuse sex um, whatever that is yeah like um, notification right yeah 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 so offender offender so yeah I, I guess I, I don't know I guess it can get, start getting crowded though if we create too many different <laughs> too categories many right offenders like, for this and that yeah yeah so we're having I, that, that one I could probably be okay with but I don't know I'm just always cautious in creating too much just like just like I'm on, I'm on and, and we love it we, we love our animals right and and it's just like I can't imagine this kind of stuff, but um, it's just, it's just like, you know, do we get too much? Does it get too crowded? I, I don't know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Probably. It'd probably be okay though. Can I tell my story that happened yeah. last weekend? Yeah. Which story? The one with the dog. Which dog? Well, so dog. I was with some people on, <laughs> on Friday. Clearly and, I've forgotten. And um, some, one of them got a phone call from a friend that says they're, they were stopped on the side of the highway oh, to yes. let their dog out of the car to like stretch and whatever. Cause they were coming from Colorado and she saw a dog there. I look like a mother dog that she had recently had puppies yeah. just kind of wandering around, but she had a collar on and real nice and all that. And so one of the other people I was with was saying, well, look around and see if there's like a box or a trash can or anything like that. And I was telling them the story of the time that we found a dog, a puppy in the trash can. Was it Tucson? In Tucson. Like south side of Tucson. Yeah. yeah. Found a dog in a trash can outside of a Seven Eleven or circle K or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, that. it turns out that the woman on the phone says, yeah, there's a box. I see the box. And she was kind of like, I'm kind of scared to look inside. She opens it. There's seven puppies inside. Inside in a cl- inside the like box a was shut. Box? The box was shut. Oh, that's sick. No water or food, and um, whoever had mm. dumped these dogs left a water bowl for the mother dog and some Chick Fil A fries. Oh well, the life is good. Yeah, I guess. Yes. but nothing for these cute little puppies that look in like a they box. were um, six mu- uh, hey, six weeks old. Box. Well, what? Was it, what but what, then what, the disturbing thing was. Um, tell. It gets more disturbing. With the animal shelter, right? It was right oh, it's right down the road. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, was, it happened to be like, I mean, they, they wound up being around Sunset Crater, and there's an animal shelter probably five, 10 miles there's away. There's an animal shelter and right there saying, on 89. How yeah. hard is it? It can't be any harder to just dump them on the road than to dump them at the animal well, shelter. And I don't know. I'm, I'm not a judge or anything, but it sounds like they, if they got the fast food, like you mentioned, yeah, they must have come from Flagstaff and gone by the they animal drove shelter. They past the animal shelter. Okay, so make a registry. Well, at least that's the... If you uh, can find these people, that right? That is the picture we saw was like an empty fry container yeah, yeah. and a bowl of water, but nothing for the okay, little puppies. Okay, fine. And we do this registry, but you never find these people. You know, I guess you could get lucky someone's driving by and they see them drop in a box off yeah, on the side. Yeah, you might get a license plate like, or okay, something. Okay, make sure this person never gets to purchase or adopt or, uh, you know, have right. a dog again, yeah. because obviously they're... I mean, yeah... 
you could find well, a fast well, you could find a fast food place and you manage you have the intelligence yeah. to drive a car and all that right yeah but you can't you, so you, you couldn't how, find the animal shelter how can anyone leave know, seven puppies jacked up in a box and just leave the mother sitting there without access to yeah. her puppies yeah, and, yeah 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 okay so registry you think this is a good <laughs> idea a, i mean after that story you yeah, should go I mean, testify that one you won't find the the person who did it like you said no but, but in on the off chance that maybe maybe if they uh, by. have more more repercussions possibly of yeah you'll never be able to adopt anything again or anything like and that and your photo and name is gonna yeah, be out maybe there maybe that would deter people from yeah, doing yeah, you know, so. like and that. your address is it that too and well you know yeah, like the sounds... signs that go on like the, huh. the, the the telephone poles you know like lost puppy it's like uh-huh. you know just put their picture up there like puppy hater <laughs> puppy <laughs> abuser right do not give puppy to i mean I, I, I don't understand, know what you do with these i people. understand that sometimes you have a dog who has puppies and you're maybe unable to take care of these puppies fine bring Somebody them to a shelter is. yeah someone there's, else will foster yeah, them there's shelters there's shelters around and if yeah if you you just put it out there that I got these puppies. I can't take care of them, and I don't, I don't want to have to drop them off beside the road. Well, yeah, I want to remain anonymous. You see Please in, help me. Somebody will grab them. These people standing outside the grocery store with puppies in a shopping cart and like free puppy sign on there, and yeah. you know, just something, anything. Usually, somebody because someone will yeah. take them. Yeah, those those things where you're driving by with your kids and the free puppies, and you're like, <laughs> "Don't look, kids! <laughs> don't look! <laughs> no!" <laughs> okay, so maybe not a bad idea then. I don't know. Couldn't, couldn't hurt, I guess, as long as we don't create like a department of bureaucracy, you know, to track, you know, yeah. maybe put the, put the, put the A dot sign people on that. You know, the people that yeah. are doing the stupid overhead signs and How the long useless it takes stuff. to get from Wait, flex better, up to page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instead of that, yeah, they, they, they're in charge of. A puppy database or or better yet how about the sustainability down department down yeah. at the city of flagstaff you know the the people that are consuming five percent of the city's general fund doing nothing put them on puppy patrol or pothole patrol yeah. or something right yeah. there's there's something useful right there all right love to hear from you talk with jeff at i see we're solving things one step at a time here <laughs> talk with jeff at icloud.com that's talk with jeff at icloud.com if your uh, heater is out you, you or not even if it's just like, hey, flick it on, it's not working. I would recommend just writing down this number now because when it does not work, when you because everybody has this. Yeah, it's going to happen sometimes. And you should have, this is like, a, I don't know, a doctor or a dentist or something, right? You should just have this regular type mm-hmm. thing yeah. going on where you're getting uh, inspections and stuff on your HVAC system. Gettles, High Desert Mechanical, they've been doing this for decades. They're the best out there. They do a great job. They don't service HVAC systems throughout northern and central Arizona. So we're talking to Prescott area, Sedona, Verde Valley, Flagstaff, really anywhere in this area. Uh, call Gettles High Desert Mechanical. That's what Angela and I do. Here's the number, 928-772-2751. 928-772-2751. Or go to Gettles, G-O-E-T-T-L-S, G-O-E-T-T-L-S, H-D-M.com. Gets Gettles, H-D-M.com. listening to the podcast please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there if you're not listening to the podcast subscribe look up the jeff orbit show also on video rumble follow us there and on youtube subscribe we appreciate everyone who's done that This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. When you get a rock chip in your windshield, stop by Diamond Auto Glass as soon as possible because replacing a chip will stop it from spreading and save you from a costly windshield replacement. And if you've replaced your windshield with Diamond Auto Glass, you have a lifetime chip repair warranty and no appointments necessary. Just stop in. Most chip repairs take 10 to 15 minutes. Always call Diamond Auto Glass first, 928-779-4140. 928-779-4140. Or go to thedifferenceisclear.com. So many bells are coming to life. So I'm just trying to keep up on them all. Yeah, but I'm not, there's so many of them. There's hundreds and hundreds. Most of them die. 
Um, last one here to cover is uh, SB 1158. The Senate approved it, party line vote. It's spell out in Arizona law that's whoever the presidential nominee is from any recognized political party. So it wasn't because this was the Republicans that passed this. You cannot exclude them or remove them from the general election ballot, quote unquote, on the basis of a claimed violation of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. Um this has happened in what Colorado yeah, and, and, and Maine and stuff. And what's going on with that lawsuit? Because Colorado is coming up here pretty soon. And I haven't seen anything about yeah, it. I don't know. I mean, that's not too far off as yeah. far as that's a primary, primary. A, a, a election there. And it just removed Trump. So they're just saying you can't do that. You know, just take them off the ballot. But uh, just because of a, an alleged violation, yeah, especially that. Yeah. I don't know though. This will. This should get. I guess you could put that in there and make it codified into state law, um, but the Supreme Court should sort this one out pretty soon. Yeah, Colorado. You know, and, they're there's they are on Super Tuesday, March fifth. Oh, okay. So that's it's like, uh, where's that Supreme Court decision? Yeah, you know, I don't where, know, where's that court decision to say if because Trump's still on the ballot there, but he's disqualified as of right now. Mm-hmm. You know, like doesn't count. And where's that? Where's that decision? What yeah. if this was truly a competitive race for the Republican primary? It's yeah, not true. Nikki yeah. Haley seems to think it is for some reason, <laughs> but you know, it's not where they, they need to act on this pretty quick. All right. That's it for today. Olivia, um, Saturday, one more time. Yes. Remember the Navajo taco sale. It's on fourth street. You'll see the signs. Okay. Round yeah. 10 coming by one. We're going on a school trip. So it's a fundraiser yeah. for that. Come say hi. And, uh, Get a great, great, some yeah. great food. Yummy lunch. Yeah. All right. Hope you all have a great, safe night. We'll be back here tomorrow. Start it all over again. Take care. <laughs> See you soon. The information provided on The Jeff Orvitz Show does not constitute legal, medical, financial, or tax advice. All information is the opinions of the host and guests. You should always seek the advice of a professional regarding any of these complex issues to make sure all circumstances of your situation are properly considered. Hey, if you're listening to the podcast, please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there. If you're not listening to the podcast, subscribe. Look up The Jeff Orvitz Show. Also on video, Rumble, follow us there. And on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate everyone who's done that. This is the Jeff Orbit Show.